Red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry. Ma, ma, ma. Ladies, gentlemen, and every gorgeous person out there, I would like to welcome you to the Virtua channel, and I am your host, Virtua Lily. Today's episode is going to be a bit of a guide and tutorial on voice feminization. And this is in particular for the both the transgender community as well as the VTuber community who are just simply looking to get their voices in a place that they're comfortable with and wish to present. By the way, did you know you can help support this channel and keep the lights on by hitting that like and that subscribe bubble just downstairs and that will help this channel grow very smoothly. Thank you very much. So if you're here, you must be looking for ways to make your voice as comfortable as possible for you to present in front of others. And this guide is going to be sort of going through the various different techniques and ways that I have personally learned how to achieve my own voice through research and techniques that I've learned from voice actors and singers over the past like 10 or 12 years. So there's a couple of different ways that you can go around about voice feminization. And what does that mean in particular? This means achieving a more softer and higher tone for your voice, which is received and perceived as, you know, more effeminate. And you can even use some of these tips and guides to sort of develop your own voice acting career a lot further on. Or if you want to, you can even reverse engineer to help with voice masculinization, which tends to use some of the same techniques and some of the same uh, reference points as well. Full, so full disclosure, I am not a professional. I don't have any certification when it comes to voice training. However, I have lots of experience using guides and references from so many voice actors all across the world and also even the singing industry. So with some of this, I managed to compile different ways and techniques that will help teach you how to feminize and get that glorious, lovely voice that you've always been looking for. And with all that said, let's get digging. Hopefully with enough training and with enough time, you can also, you know, achieve some very strange results when it comes to uh, flexing your voice. Na 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 na. Hi, good morning. Well, I did not mean to wake up in such a manly voice today. Me, man, boy, yes, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will also mention as well that some of these techniques as well do sort of get a lot more easier and develop a little bit more further when you're taking, uh, you know, hormone replacement treatments or things like this that can actually help sort of change the muscle fibers in your body to accommodate for things a little bit further. However, I have had some great results from this course that I'm about to give you as well, which is universal across any, any progress. So this course is broken up into a minimum of four weeks with four weeks worth of exercises to slowly train and build your body and build those muscles up to help support a natural and a continuous voice. As you can probably hear with my voice, I have trained it to a point where this is now my unconscious voice. This is my natural voice that will simply sit and stay as is. It will not change in pitch or anything like this unless I have to physically make it do so. So let's work through the most basics of voice and voice acting. So what is voice? Voice in particular is the use of air squeezing through your lungs and your trachea and your entire windpipe to produce a vibration, which is interpreted as sound and as voice. And in order to produce that, we need the very first basics, which is air. So there's a technique in singing class as well as in uh, professional voice training uh, class as well on sort of diaphragm breathing. And yes, the way that you breathe is rudimental to how you project and how your vocal cords are going to respond as well as the presentation of the voice that you're trying to project as is as well. So let's get a couple of reference points to start working on and to get you a good foundation to start building yourself on. So let's use one of the very first uh, tips that I received that led me on my own journey, which is the big barrel versus the little barrel. So with the big barrel, little barrel, we're gonna be thinking of your lung capacity and your breathing style sort of as a giant big old barrel. It has all this tons of air inside of it that you can utilize and sort of push out. And it takes a little bit of time uh, to do so. You can't quite get all of the air out in one 
all one sweet go. It does take its time uh, to get through, you know, the necessary passage passageways. However, this is for particularly masculine and male voices. Um, however, you do have an internal smaller barrel of air that you can utilize at any point. So with the big barrel, this is the amount of air that typically masculine uh, projection seems to have and is able to use to produce masculine voices. We, as you can see, we have all this air and all this kind of thing, which meets quite a bit of resistance as it hits the nozzle and eventually it does make its way out. However, it takes a lot of time for all this air to get through. And for feminine voices and tones, you actually use a different reservoir of air that does live and reside inside this barrel. So what I found is the best ways to sort of visualize this process is to think of like a small, tinier barrel inside already of your existing giant barrel and to simply plug that in to the instruments and the windpipes. So what this is going to feel like and what you're trying to emulate is a significant drop in how much air you can hold and how much air you can get out. So uh, with this giant barrel, you have a lot of air and it takes its time to slowly get out. Using a smaller barrel, you don't have much air and all of the air that you have inside of you is released very, very quickly. It doesn't hit this big old resistance area. It simply just pops out very, very quickly and comes back in, fills up very, very quickly. So the reason why I'm using this visualization technique is because it emulates the physics of voice. With masculine tones, you are using very little air and very little pressure to get your vocal cords to start resonating at those lower frequencies, you know, getting them to bounce, you know, at a lower frequency. Whereas with female tones, you need more air, you need more energy to get the vocal cords that are already going to be quite, quite tight to get them to slowly vibrate at the right resonance, right frequencies, but you need much more energy to do so. So all the air that you already have has to escape a lot faster without reach, without hitting sort of like these hard resistance points that give your ability to sort of relax your vocal cords and get them to resonate at a lower frequency. Think of this way as if you don't blow hard enough into the reed of a windpipe instrument, it won't make its necessary sound. But if you blow um, just hard enough, eventually it's going to start resonating, it's going to start vibrating. However, there has to be um, a sufficient control of air to do so. With masculine tones, it is very low effort and you have tons of energy to slowly distribute over a longer course of time. Whereas with the feminine tones, all the air gets pushed out and is expended very quickly. And you'll find that you'll be able to hold a note a lot longer with masculine voices rather than you can with higher pitched feminine voices. This is also why like opera singers that are very well known for holding a note for incredible amounts of time tend to be on the lower end of the scales, tend to be on the more masculine tones. However, this is only a simple visualization technique, so let's do an exercise to actually get you practicing how this works. So to achieve your big barrel to little barrel transition, let's think about how you're using your diaphragm to breathe. And here is a exercise for you to practice to get yourself understanding how that airflow works and how it feels with your own organs. And how do we achieve that? Well, we're gonna become dogs. Will admit this is a bit of a strange one, but hear me out. So here, this sort of teaches you a couple of things. One is gonna teach you how to control your breathing, as well as the amount of resistance that is coming out of your lungs past your vocal organs. And particularly, I like to use the little dog versus the big dog breathing technique. So first up, I want y'all to breathe like a big old dog. Now, you should probably recognize what that means. So you can hear when a dog is panting and it's a big dog. It's very bassy. It's taking its time. There's lots of resistance and there's you can hear plenty of airflow going in and out of a large reserve. <gasps> Now, if you listen closely to that, you can kind of tell where I'm starting to go with this. You can hear 
masculine and feminine breathing. There is almost gender to the way that you present airflow in itself without using the use of vibrations and without using voice. As opposed to when you start breathing like a little dog, now, as you can tell with that, the breathing is a lot more quicker and it's a lot more higher pitched. And you can tell that the air is going in, filling up, stopping and getting itself out very quickly with very little resistance. And particularly, this is the type of breathing that you'll be using for feminine breathing. For masculine breathing, you wanna be going for the big old dogs. So the reason how I came up with this technique is I have noticed that you can tell when it is a masculine voice presenting breathing versus when it is a feminine voice presenting breathing. There is a listened and heard difference in the way that people breathe. And this goes very well into our next steps because this will teach you how to whisper and to sort of give yourself a good solid foundation on how to get your voice in the places where you need to be. This technique is also very, very useful for finding the source of your voice, which I'm gonna get into in just a second. But for right now, simply practice on your breathing techniques, on the way that you can breathe like a big old dog versus when you breathe like a small little dog, getting all of your air out slowly with plenty of resistance, um, taking its time to resonate, and really get all the air out of your lungs. Whereas with the small dog, you're only using that small reservoir of air that you have, and it can only get through such a small sort of set of organs. So it goes in and out very quickly, done. So in the previous step, I was talking about something called the source of your voice. And the dog breathing technique does help locate and give you a physical reference on where and what that is. So what is the source of your voice? The source of your voice is what I would like to imagine as sort of like this little ball that exists within your throat that is the literal box, the literal ball that holds all the vibration for your voice. You can sort of imagine that this ball is the source of where all of the vibration and all of your voice is coming from. So if you put your hand sort of towards your chest, you can probably likely, if you're speaking in masculine tones, feel more of a vibration there than you would do sort of like the head and neck. However, this ball is able to move and this ball can move into one of three different areas. However, we're gonna be focusing on areas M1 and M2, your chest voice versus your head voice. So for feminine voices, typically it is using what is known as head voice. And this is where the vibrations, the source of your voice is sort of starting towards sort of like the, the base of the, like the base of the skull, sort of top of the head around this area is where voice, feminine voice is projected from. Masculine tones tend to be sort of below the clavicle towards more the diaphragm and playing around in these areas. So Lily, how do I get my little ball to start moving around in my throat? Well, this is where you go back to the dog breathing technique. As with the dog breathing technique, you can feel a sort of cold rush um, within your throat and in your chest. If you're breathing like the big old dog, you'll be feeling sort of that cold rush, the air resistance, definitely more towards the lungs, the chest, more lower down. Whereas if you're breathing like the chihuahua, you'll feel that cold rush sort of in the back of the throat, sort of top of the head. That is where the air resistance is hitting. That is where your head voice is going to physically be. If you need more of a physical reference, always go back to the breathing like a dog, both small dog and big dog. So as I first start, you can hear that my voice is will be sort of towards the base of the skull, top of the neck, sort of around this area. Now, if I bring the ball itself down as I slowly drop my voice, I'm gonna drop this now towards more of the clavicle area. This is where I believe that it's more gender neutral, that it's uh, androgynous, can go sort of either way of the spectrums. Um, and this is probably gonna be one of the more harder areas for you to um, discover and play around with, as this is what I call the barrier, the wall, or the switch. However, if I get my voice to go a little bit lower than that, now this is towards my chest uh, and more my diaphragm areas. This is where I'm now projecting from. This is where I feel most of the vibration. Um, and this is where I'm feeling uh, the voice coming from. And you can hear that this is more masculine tones. Um, 
And now as I slowly bring this voice back up, we're entering the clavicle area again, and then into the throat, higher into the head. And the higher I bring this voice, the higher my voice will go. And if I break and if I break the skull barrier and go way, way above my head, I will be entering a, well, more uh, Mickey Mouse areas, which you don't really want to go to, huh? And for a technical term, that is classified as a falsetto, which is something we are not trying to achieve here. We are trying simply trying to achieve between those bassy notes, between falsetto, and just getting that octave that feminine ranges tend to play around in. Now, you do not have to have a high-pitched voice to be feminine. You can have much deeper tones, and you can even play around with your own vocal cords to sort of find that pitch, that tone that you are looking for, for your own style. Now, again, going back to the dog breathing techniques, if you are breathing like a small dog, try and focus the airflow and the resistance points, all of that, you know, airness that you can feel going in and out, sort of towards in the throat, sort of around the top of the top of the top of the neck, base of the skull area. This is where you want to sort of be focusing on and trying to get a feel for. And then if you're ever unsure of yourself, go back to breathing like a big old dog and you can definitely feel that air resistance hitting like your chest the um, and your lungs. For big dog breathing, you're going to feel all that resistance here. <sighs> Using all the air, that big old barrel that we we're talking about earlier, all that sits here and all that resistance, all of that sound that you, know, that, that you sort of get from the breathing itself is mostly produced here. Whereas with the little dog breathing, you're gonna feel all that resistance and that coldness just about here. Really flexing your diaphragm muscle to get all the air out and all the air in very, very quickly in a short amount of time with as little resistance through your throat as possible. So this is now the first week of actual training. And this is something that can be done um, in your own time, in your own privacy, and is non-invasive to any of your environments. This is something that I actually used myself uh, when I was first starting out with my transition. Um, I would simply walk down the roads using this technique. If I was, you know, doing some chores and, you know, there was no one really around to bother me, I would take five minutes here and there to sort of practice this and sort of get my body ready to present itself when I was ready to. I'm going to say for certain that the ball technique is the key to what helped me break into my own voice. Um, it was something that I had developed over a very long time. And if anything, this is the tip that really made sure that I could solidify my voice. And it's also something that when I teach other people, tends to translate a lot more easily and get them to where they need to be as well. Now, in singing classes, you'll hear this as, as M1 versus M2 voices. And this is something that you're actually probably going to be likely using a lot when you get into the later stages as well, as we will be slowly learning different ways and techniques around singing in order to get to where you are. And trust me, I don't know how to sing. I, I, I really don't. But however, the techniques and stuff that you learn from classes with that does help dramatically. Now, as you probably can tell, I still have yet to get onto the topic of voice, of vibration, and actually producing a sound. However, at this stage, I still do not want you to be producing sound. I still want you to be learning and playing around with your air control. Typically, I will always tell my students to practice whispering and airflow control for a solid week before moving on to voice and vocal projection. Reason being, you're now using a bunch of muscles that you have never used before. You are using um, whole parts of your body that are alien to some of this environment. And in itself, um, it is training. You are training your body to do something that it couldn't do beforehand. And please make sure that you're also drinking plenty of water because you will get very dehydrated and to keep all of your instruments well lubricated, please keep yourself hydrated. And I know this technique does work because it's something that I discovered entirely on accident when I first started presenting as female. I didn't have my voice and I was very, very terrified of it. So I... However, I had been sort of playing around with voice acting as it was and I knew that I could sort of get my air, my whisper, to sound on the effeminate scale, that it wouldn't be sort of like taken as a masculine way. So that is what I did. All I did for a solid two weeks was just whisper. 
Now, admittedly, you don't have to do it for two weeks. I'm just saying do it for the one just so that way you're training your body and getting your muscles ready to support your next projection. So what do I mean by whisper? Whisper, I don't mean very bulky because this is not whispering. Whispering is when you're using only airflow to produce a form of sound that you can then wrap your lips around to produce speech of a form. I, for example, this is my voice when I'm whispering. This is kind of, this is kind of whispering that you understand to be quiet whispering and that whenever a character is in using voice and vibration, you tend to go, shush, shut the f*** up. Word to God. <laughs> So learning to whisper is going to be your next foundation and is going to be the one of the biggest supports in you training your body to support your new voice. Your next goals are to try and focus where the source of your breathing voice is, of where your whisper voice is, and eventually where your voice is going to be. So visualize your voice as the source that ball and it is trying to get some form of sound out but you can only whisper and you cannot produce any voice any vibration to that but you can still use the source of where that is you can still focus on how you are breathing to project a tone that is perceived as your preferred gender for example hi this is me Trying to whisper in a masculine tone, produce a deeper masculine sort of breathing aesthetic. And simply just practice this whispering, practice this airy sort of speech for the next week, and then you'll be ready for the next stage, which is to slowly squeak in your voice just behind things. All right, so now we're on to week two of our training period. And this is where you're going to be slowly squeaking in uh, your voice and your vocal cords to sort of get them used to this new foundation that you've been building on. Now, there are a couple of things to try and learn when building up your voice in this area. Number one, stay hydrated. I cannot emphasize enough how much strain this can put on to your vocal cords. Please make sure that you're lubricating your throat well and you do not damage yourself. It is takes time, it is training, and please make sure that you're taking plenty of care for yourself. If you feel like your voice is getting too raspy and that it's hitting sort of like a limit, don't push yourself. Don't tear anything. Simply take a couple of days off, get some honey and lemon tea, and take a breather. However, if you're feeling confident in this stage, this is where you're going to start evolving from your whisper talk, your airflow talk, to applying more vocal cords and more vibrations to things. Now, before getting into this, this is where you want to start thinking about um, how feminine speech sort of works on a presentation level. The one thing that I found is a key difference between what is seen as feminine speech versus masculine speech is how they present it. And this is very, very prevalent between when you hear, even in masculine tones, feminine speech. Well, this is particularly how feminine presenters sing when they talk. Yes, yeah, so feminine speech tends to have more ups, highs, lows, downs. It, it bounces around all over the place when presenting their speech. It is feminine singing that is seen as effeminate. And the, one of the best examples is sort of when you hear sort of drag queens uh, do their speech. They are speaking with masculine voices. However, you hear this and you can't quite help but find that there's a tone that comes off as effeminate. Now, unfortunately, this is something that does produce a lot of stigma and can um, sort of, you know, give grounds for discrimination against, which is unfortunate and simply a byproduct of the hyper-hegemonic masculine society that we live in. Now, for our purposes, we're going to be using some of that culture to our advantage, and we're going to make sure that we effeminize our voice in the way that is perceived in, by the general consensus. Which, to do so, means we need to sing. 
So, as you can hear with my voice, I am going up and down in terms of where I am presenting from, how I want to accentuate words. I am really playing around with the frivolity and the expression of my voice. And that is seen and perceived as effeminate in common society. Whereas if you're more monotone and sort of don't really bounce around with your voice too much, um, it can be sort of understood and seen as masculine. Um, and um, if you try to do so with a more female tones, it's kind of more androgynous in a, in a weird sense. In short, girly girly means singy singy. Now, you don't actually have to produce a girly girly voice for this. However, it is one of those cases where hyper feminization can go a lot longer if you are really trying to make sure that you're getting yourself across that boundary. Oh, thank you, society. So how do you achieve sing song in your voice when speaking? And why is this relevant now? Well, the reason being is because I want you to try to sing as you're learning your voice. This will give you a couple of things. It will, one, give you the foundation for what your voice needs to be um, when you're learning how to make it vibrate and to make it do the sound thing. But then after that, you're also learning how to present that new voice in a new way using new muscles that you're training alongside it. So this does one of two things. So for myself, after I had done the whisper arc, I then started to learn that, yes, feminine speech has sing song, it sings. So this is where you wanna be teaching yourself some form of how to sing. I myself, I chose a song that really resonated with me at the time, and I simply just kept repeating the same lyrics over and over and over again, but in whisper. And as I would whisper the lyrics over and over and over again, this is where I would really try to focus on the origin, the source of my voice, trying to be in the throat, base of the skull area. This is where I'm really putting that, you know, that, that mental image, that mental focus on. And as I'm doing that whisper, and then trying to bring the voice in just behind that airflow, really actually squeak and be very delicate with it. If I ever had the voice come out first, ahead of the, um, the airiness, that sort of like, <sighs> the squeakiness first, if I didn't have that, I would stop. Reason being, I want the airflow, I want the air control to be the foundation of where my voice is. And I do not want the vibration to sort of guide where that goes. It has to be the air first, then the voice. Eventually, it becomes so second nature that this phase doesn't really matter anymore. And as you get into like your, you know, few months stages training at least. But for right now, be very, very airy and very, very soft with your voice. You kind of think things along, you know, the same sort of styles as like Fluttershy. As long as I make sure I'm bringing my voice out with air first, it won't be seen as um so... And as you can tell, that voice is very, very soft. It's very, very um delicate. And that's because I'm putting the voice out... I'm putting the voice out after I'm presenting it with air. But the air comes out first, and then I try and slowly drag, squeak that voice in behind. Now, this is also something that you can do sort of in your own privacy. Um, this is something very quiet, very delicate to play around with. It's not something you're projecting out to the high heavens. So this is something I would do walking down the streets. You know, cars do not care about you at all in the slightest. And uh, you can just simply walk up and down and just, you know, sing some lyrics to yourself. At, the, at this point, you're just singing lyrics to yourself, but under under your own breath, very quietly and you're not bothering anybody. This thing I would also do when mowing the lawn or just any bits and pieces, any time I could find an opportunity, I could find time to practice. And these techniques are so non-invasive that it gives me that opportunity to do so in my own private time. And eventually, as you slowly learn to develop your own voice, singing becomes a really core part of practicing and stretching your vocal cords for any necessary needs. Like for myself, I still use singing to this day as a way to wake up and get my voice trained 
for anything that I may need to be doing during the day. Every morning, I will wake up and I will simply choose a way to sing. To And this allows me to sort of regulate and calibrate where I want my voice. I'm still using the singing as a way to sort of bounce where I want the source of my voice um, to always be at the base of skull, back of the neck for me, myself. And then if I really need to drop it, I can also sing myself a little bit deeper as well as necessary. You are now going through week one and week two. So you should be at this point where you're now starting to squeeze your voice in and you're getting the higher notes able to consistently show themselves in your speech. However, the high notes are actually the easiest parts. It is much more easier to push in enough effort and energy to get your voice to vibrate at those higher resonances. However, bringing the voice down to then produce a more bassy note without actually going into masculine speech is going to be really, really hard. Thankfully, I've got an amazing trick which skips all of this. And I call this the Raven Croak. So this is where um, you start developing and understanding your style of voice. Uh, for myself, I decided to go for skater girl. Um, I wanted, you know, sort of that tomboyish like vibe to myself. That was the style of woman that I wanted to achieve and become. So envisioning that, that is where I went to and that's where I discovered the Raven Croak. So the Raven technique is built upon um, one of my most favorite characters of all time, Raven from Teen Titans, and uh, typically voiced by Tara Strong. So Tara uses this um, really amazing way to get her voice to be gravelly and croaky um, to achieve the voice of Raven. And this is actually a style that resonated really well with me and eventually led me on to a way to sort of cheat and achieve bass tone and notes without going into masculine voice. So this is so this is something that I use all the time and you can actually probably hear it in my voice now. As mentioning earlier on with sing song voice, I can go to high notes quite well, but it's when I go to more lower notes that you start noticing that I have a bit of a croak. The reason why I have the croak is because I can't go lower without going into more masculine tones. So this is why I have the croak to cheat and get around that obstacle. And the crook is an amazing technique. It does so many different things. It, as well as one, it cheats you out of having to achieve bassy notes so you can focus more on your higher tones and make sure that they're nice and soft. It is also societally seen as attractive. Yeah, weirdly enough, having a, a bit of a croaky voice tends to sort of make you seen as an attractive person towards um, the typical male masculine hegemony culture. And the one thing that I will always say is that woman is a product of how we respond to that masculine culture. It has nothing to do with biology, nothing to do with the whatever it is. Women are amazing, but we are a response to a hyper-hegemonic masculine culture. Especially in today's society. This is not unanimous across his history at all in the slightest, but that's for another video. So putting a croak into your voice, one, makes you sexy, and two, allows you to skip doing bassy notes, which is really, really hard, especially in your earliest days learning how to do your voice. So again, the Raven croak is really, really useful for getting around those obstacles that you're probably going to encounter along your journey. The croak is also a really, really good base to work from whenever you're unsure of where your voice is. If you, I would highly recommend that you try and break your voice early in the mornings with a croak rather than you punching it with the singing and the higher notes, as you probably may crack your voice and you won't reach the exact pitches that you're looking for. And it's playing around with the energy output and how hard you push your frequencies that get your style of voice, as well as playing with how much air gets through um, versus how much resistance the airflow 
hits. So if you're looking for more clear and sort of more confident, more strong voices, sort of similar towards my own, then this is where, um, yes, I will be using those higher tones, but then when I need to, I can always drop back to those basier tones just to sort of relax things. But I'm using that croak nonetheless. Now, if I want to go into more deeper tones with my voice, but still stay in the feminine, so this is where I'm going to rely on those croaks to sort of get me more by when I'm trying to emphasize my words a lot more harder. Because I'm not trying to put too much energy to higher notes or emphasize that. What I'm actually trying to emphasize and put my strength into is those croaks, those lower notes. However, I'm also making sure not to drop into the masculine no tones and keep my voice well above the clef area, but still using some of that chest to give myself a little bit more of a boost. Now, playing with your voice around like this does take years of practice and years of training, so uh, don't overcomplicate things for yourself too hard. These are just simply examples for you to work from and build your own references from. Now, I'm only giving you these examples as ways to give yourself a reference point um, and not something you're going to be looking into doing over the course of four weeks. This is something that you learn to do over the course of many years, learning your voice, playing around with it. I once had a masculine voice, which I can no longer achieve. I cannot get that voice back at all in the slightest. And this is from years of training and practicing with my new voice. And with this voice, I have able to been able to learn how it works and how I can play around with that using both the croak, using it either whispery, airy sort of airflow, as much resistance or as little resistance as I possibly need in either interim. Again, playing around with where the source is as well, making that ball move up and down your throat to your chest can give you various different styles and a tone that you're looking for. Again, not all voices are the same and presentation really plays a key part in how you are received. So it is a case of choosing what style of feminine do you wish to present in? Do you wish to present in more tomboyish, sort of skater girl vibes like I am? Or do you want to go with more sort of deeper sensual sort of vibes? Or do you want that hyper super girly, um, or if not very, very cute, soft and subtle vibes? Choose your style that fits you and slowly work with it. And this is where you're going to be getting into your last week. So with week one, you've been learning how to breathe. With week two, you're learning how to whisper. Week three, you're learning how to just get your sing-song voice in. And week four is where you're taking all of this together and you're applying that raven croak to get yourself speaking and talking. And the more that you do so, the more that you train and the more that you practice, the more clearer and the better reference points that you can give yourself to um, carry on, and if not, make this your new baseline voice. And these are still references and guides that I use to this day. This is where every morning I will wake up and I make sure that um, my voice uh, needs to be cleared and it is ready for the day. And it not always is. Sometimes if I speak too fast, I can crack my voice as if I were going through puberty again, again, again again. <laughs> um, and so when I wake up, I still have the phlegm, my muscles are hell a lot more relaxed. And I can find that I can do really good bassy masculine voices when I immediately wake up and I haven't done any talking or anything like this. I haven't even focused on the way that I'm breathing, not necessarily just for voice is also the way that I'm breathing and I can feel the air going up and down through myself. So yes, um, so yeah, every morning I wake up, I will have to clear the phlegm out of my throat and I will need to make sure that my voice is strong enough to support my baseline. Um, however, it can still crack and break every now and then. So every morning I will wake up and I will go through my basic exercises, which is very similar to what you find in singing and uh, any voice acting course, which is just to get those muscles working and clearing your throat out of, out of all the phlegm and making sure that you know how to hold yourself, how to hold your lung capacity, how to hold uh, your projection, and eventually find where your style is for the day. So um, in particular, I will wake up and I will go through my typical things of, you know, singing the exact same lyrics I've been singing for the past 12 years. 
wondering what the song was. It was Fly Away from Teddy Lloyd. For some reason, that was a song that was stuck in my head at the time, and I've been using the exact same lyrics to sing for my voice training for well over a decade. I don't know why. But choose your own song nonetheless. Or if not, uh, you can develop your own lyrics or songs, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just simply try and get something out there in the sing song to make sure that you are in your feminine presentation, as well as you're hitting those high notes and you know where to drop down for your lower notes for those bass tones and that you know where to go into your raven growl, that, that really gravelly voice for when you need to get to your lower notes. So for me, for some reason, I always go to fucking Disney for an another weird reason, which is very against uh, my, you know, sort of character. Um, if I need to make sure that my voice is very particularly effeminate and clear for, I don't know, a meeting or something like this, I will just go, I want to be where the people are. And for some reason, that helps me reset and ground my voice. And I know where it's going to be. And I know that my voice is going to be presented and received as feminine. However, if you if you find me in sort of like a more, you know, angrier tones, you can definitely hear that raven growl come through and I get a lot more, you know, a lot more deeper. But I can still sing song to emphasize my certain points and to throw in um, where I want my speech to be heard and received. However, that is also, again, down to a society bullshit thing, which is presented in a whole other video. So to go over our full course, this is a four week course and it can uh, expand depending on how far, far along you are with your own progress. And uh, sometimes can even you know be um, fast forwarded if you see, feel comfortable and that you feel strong enough in your own progress. First off, you're going to start out with the breathing techniques and how to whisper, learning your airflow. And second week, you're going to be learning how to sing and try and get a form of control of how you are presenting that airflow in speech. Third week is where you're going to be squeaking that voice in behind, breaking it in, being very, very delicate to train and practice with that new voice that you have and those new positions. Then your fourth week is where you're going to be exercising this more in general speech, using the raven croak to your best advantage, and eventually giving yourself a solid foundation to go ahead and train your voice as it's going to evolve. My voice used to be incredibly high-pitched and was comparable to a very typical anime girl. Um, which was not something I wanted to achieve at first. However, this was something that evolved over time, especially with my own sort of style and with how I grew my own aesthetic. Eventually, I fell into the category of sort of gamer girl, sort of, you know, um, bit more um, androgynous is the word I want to use. Um, and eventually, yeah, just sort of giving myself that confidence in the style and tones that I wanted to. And I really, really hope that this video is well received by all y'all and that you go ahead and you find your voice and you're able to express yourselves in the ways that make you most beautiful, which is just sharing who you are. All right, everybody. Thank you all so, so much for hanging out with me and I will be seeing you all on the, the next one. And please don't forget to check out all my other videos as well. And we'll be coming up with some other new content as well, sort of along the lines of trans discussion to sociology, to even understanding the sciences and the social sciences within virtual reality. So please stick by with me and subscribe. Hit that little button down there for all the notifications and, um, um, we'll be seeing you all on the next one. All right, take care, toodaloos.